Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. I'm Allison Murray, the Director of Children's Ministries here at Norwin, and Jeff Terpstra, our usual host, has handed over the mic to me today. So I'm really excited. Um, we always laugh in the office. I have a naturally really like loud voice, so I've tried to refine my podcasting voice, mm. but I'm really excited about our guest today and super excited about the topic. So I apologize in advance to our listeners if if I uh, revert back to my normal everyday voice. So today we have with us on my left, my friend and youth ministry colleague, Jonathan Slatt. Hi. Sorry, I thought you were introducing Patsy. That's why I kind of zoned. You said my friend. I don't, not that I, I don't consider us friends, but oh. I don't know. I <laughs> just wow. thought you were introducing Patsy. That's wow. why I was looking away. <laughs> we are friends. Hi. <laughs> Why don't you Man. introduce Patsy? You know? I feel like a counselor right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then across from me is Patsy Sassano, one of the ministers at uh, First Christian Church New Salem in Uniontown. And so, Patsy, we're so excited to have you here as a guest today. It's so great to be here. Um, Allison, though, you didn't say my friend. I. Oh, you, you oh, just said jo- friend oh, of John. Now, uh, now, oh, I'm now we've That's messed all it all <laughs> up. Patsy is my friend. <laughs> um, uh. And so the reason why we've invited him here today, um, originally I got to know Patsy um, through Camp Christian and some connections there with um, senior high youth or senior high camp and uh, fall retreat. My daughter uh, was one of the students there. Um, but then we went on to... Um, do a couple of fun family activities between our two churches. We collaborate on curriculum a lot because both of our churches use GROW curriculum for our preschool and elementary school. So that's been great. I've had a chance to go to New Salem and um, train their teachers a little bit, and I love everyone there, so that's been super great. But most recently, um, Patsy sat on our family discipleship panel last Mm -hmm. August He really just came to us with a wealth of information, some really great insight to our questions. So we thought he would be a great guest to join us here on the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So Patsy, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. I, uh, like Allison said, I'm a minister at New Salem, First Christian Church of New Salem. And uh, just actually the the day that, that we had met about curriculum, it was my 13th year. That was my 13th year at New Salem. So cool. I've been there for some time. <laughs> 22 is when I started. Jonathan, I think that's... I'm 23 right now. Yeah, so, so you're yeah. 22, 21? Yeah, I think I was yeah. 21 when 21, I started. 21, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep, so I started sooner. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, you beat me there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I uh, I also serve at uh, on the staff at a church in um, Hollywood, Florida. And so that takes me away about once a month. And of course, weekly meetings and whatnot. So... Um, I'm, I'm kind of back and forth with the two and huh. I, uh, I do kids ministry, student ministry, and I preach uh, 18 times a year. And then of course, Camp Christian is, is where we, uh, had the connection and, and I just love the, uh, the camp kids from Norwin. They're just some of my favorites, honestly. Don't, don't tell them <laughs> out there. I don't want anyone to think, uh, I have favorites, but. Well, they tell Jonathan and I, they don't listen to the podcast anyway. So oh, okay. they won't know that they're favorites. So I can talk about them. All right. Yeah. All right. Yep. I'll start listing names next. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little bit about me. Um, my, I only have one kid right now. She's my dog. And, uh, so I, you guys talked about dogs a couple yes. of podcasts. Ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so I had to talk about dog's mine. name. Yeah. Mia, type. Yeah. Mia Cannoli. Or her middle oh, name. Mia yep. Cannoli. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very Italian. Very Italian. Sassano. I, yep. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Me too. The breed. Uh, she's a Brittany. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I, I tell people Brittany and they say, is that her name? I was like, yeah, oh, that's a breed. But yeah. Yeah. Is that a big dog or a little dog? I don't know. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say medium. She's supposed to be 35 pounds, but okay. she's not. So gotcha. She she falls in the larger dog. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. I'll just, I'll just say yeah. that. I'll sound like yep. a bad pet owner if I say her actual weight, but Okay, sounds good. I love every pound of her. So. Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Very <laughs> cool. Well, the reason why I gave that long intro about how we got to first be connected is because today on the podcast, we're going to talk about 
um, Christian unity, the importance of connections and relationships with other Christians um, within our congregations, but also beyond the walls of one church and how um, we can unify together for the cause of Christ. So Patsy, to get started, if you could just give us a little bit of background information on why is it important to make connections with other Christians and and why does that really matter in our walk? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think outside the church, making connections outside the church is is so important. It allows us to see like the bigger picture of uh, of what's going on and, and what the Lord is doing. I think sometimes we can get so focused on what our church is doing. I know I can do this, so I'm not uh, I'm not saying that I'm not victim to this, but uh, we can get so focused on what uh, New Salem is doing or Norwin is doing that we forget like this is part of the bigger kingdom and uh, we're building a kingdom and not a castle. Of course, we know that saying, but um, I think it's just important to see that following Christ is is not following my church. It's following it's following the gospel and, and knowing the the greater truth of of what He's doing in our lives. Um, and then, and then within inside the church, of course, it serves as um, our accountability partners. It serves as uh, you know, iron sharpens iron kind of concept, uh, connecting together. I think that um, when we went online for a little while, I kind of got us away from what it means to connect. And I think sometimes people think that, oh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Christian, but I don't need to go to church. But connection is is obviously what God mm-hmm. wants us to do for so many different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know. Oh, that's really good. What are some ways you think we can begin? Let's say there's someone that's brand new to a church and doesn't even know what that looks like. What are yeah. some ways that you can forge those connections? Wow, you're asking the good questions. Those are yeah, <laughs> those are the tough questions today. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, I, I think that everybody we have to understand that you know some people want to be lost in church until they want to be found so we we need to be ready when people want to be found and want to be connected um but in the meantime allow them to to fill it out allow them mm-hmm. to to walk in their own journey some people want to get connected right away um some people want to join a small group the day that they visit um but some people want to check it out for a year um and just kind of just just test things out test the waters and and so we have to meet people we can't treat everybody uh, like a template or that we have a template for everybody, the same template, but um, just, just understand that everybody is a little bit unique and different and, and how they want to approach getting connected. Um, but always being available and always having a, a system in place that says, Hey, this is how you can get connected. And mm-hmm. we're here and we're ready for you when you're ready. And uh, one thing that we do at our church that has just been so helpful. I know you guys have your cafe as well. Um, our, our connections cafe, we, we started mm-hmm. a few years ago and, it is just a very informal, relaxed time that people can come. And it, it kind of gives them that crutch of like, oh, there's somewhere to go or there's somewhere that I'm supposed to like, you know, connect with people. So uh, just making those intentional, um, relaxed places um, that people can go and, and get connected, I think, yeah. to, awesome. to be very thoughtful of that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a cool thing for us to remember, like both as church leaders and as as you know, anyone who sees someone new coming to church, we get so excited. It's like, let's get them connected. Like yeah. we got to take this information, right? Here's a cool mug, right? And all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, when you have somebody over to your house for the first time, like if you were like, yeah, just eat all the food in my fridge, like, you know, do whatever you want. It'd be like, okay, this is kind of weird. Like we just met. Right. So I, it's kind of similar. I, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. 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 That's a cool, no, that's cool. cool thing. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely something that it's hard because it's like, yeah, that's what we're, we're so excited when we see somebody new or we're so, yeah. we, we want them to feel welcomed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and sometimes they just want to ease into things and mm-hmm. yeah, and it's just, it comes with like, you know, you guys are great people readers and, um, and I think that's very important why we put greeters in place mm. to let them kind of understand, you know, a person's needs and, and, and let them read that person a little bit better uh, to see where they're at mm. and, and what they want to do. So if you are listening and you are one of the people that succumbed to us kind of jumping at you excitedly <laughs> the first time you walk through the door. Please know it comes from a really good place oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that we really just want everyone yeah. to um, find their place um, and understand that um, to us, it's about not just these, these human connections that we want to make, mm-hmm. but it's about 
the connection through the Holy Spirit that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I think um, that sometimes we just get overexcited about yeah, that yeah, because yeah. we want everyone, you know, we know how that yeah. affects our lives. So we want others to know that same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Patsy, what about those connections outside the four walls of one church building or one congregation that can be a lot harder because I think we do tend to cloister ourselves off. Um, Sometimes it's scheduling issues. Like everyone really leads a busy life. And so trying to think of ways to connect with other Christians um, maybe just seems too daunting, but, but what are some ways you've seen work over the years and how can, can someone that's listening today try to connect outside of one congregation? Yeah, I think that um, Camp Christian is is obviously has been such a success story for mm. for our sister churches, and and what what you have tr- tried to do and do, have done so great is having a spot where people can meet that it's common ground, and it's not saying hey come to Norwin or come to uh, this church or that church or any specific church, it's saying, Hey, come to this place that we can just have common ground. And it is unfortunate that sometimes that we, we operate that way. We feel like, Oh, I, I'm only going to do events under this, this church or that church or whatever. But, uh, sometimes we have to just understand how human works mm-hmm. sometimes. And they just need that. Hey, this is, this is the common ground area. So, uh, camp is a great, is a great, uh, mm-hmm. uh, place to do that and, and have that common ground since that's, um, a place that we all support and connect at. Um, yeah. Jonathan, can you think of other ways, mm-hmm. like maybe in your own life that yeah. you've seen that happen? I was going to ask if I could answer. Um, I think one way recently that I felt it was very powerful was we went to the Father's Heart Ministry in Jeanette and led worship there. And I had never been there. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even really know what the event was, what we were doing. I just had the guitar and I was like, Garrett wanted to do this and I'm with him and this is going to be awesome, Right. So we kind of get there and I'm trying to feel the place out because it's like we have a couple songs picked, but you know, you know, you want to know the audience. And we kind of walk in. It's this older building with stained glass and pews. I was like, oh man, I have tattoos. Like, I don't know how they're gonna feel about this. And then, you know, we're practicing and people are coming in. And I'm like, oh man, that guy has awesome tattoos. Like, <laughs> I wish I looked like him, right? And so it's just this really cool thing. And as it filled up and you know, we kind of stopped practicing, another group got up that was just like a totally different style of worship. And, you know, in the end, you had this three-hour worship night of these people that I mean, obviously they didn't know each other, right? They weren't sitting together. They they all looked different. They had different clothes. They had different styles, right? They worshiped differently. Some people were like, you know, on their knees and they were into it. Other people were, you know, kind of sitting back and taking it all in. Um, but it was just this really powerful experience of, you know, a bunch of different people who love Jesus getting together to worship him. Um, and I, again, I, I met a couple people. It wasn't really like a space where you were like introducing yourself. It was kind of this free flowing night, but you know, it was really cool in the moment connections. Um, and even though we didn't talk, like you, you could just feel it in the room, like you could feel the spirit moving and feel the worship that was filling it. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. So things like that. I mean, just go into another church's worship night is, is a great way. Like, Churches host stuff like that all the time. They want you to come, right? They <laughs> they want anybody to come. Um, so so uh, do it for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, that made me think of kind of the opposite of this idea of of connection and unity is is just the fact that as humans, um, sometimes we fall prey to to disunity. Sometimes we fall prey to. Um, thinking either we can do it on our own or thinking that somehow we're better than other Christians, better than other churches, and we don't want to connect. So Patsy, can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, and, and we're not the, the first ones. Mm-hmm. And in fact, one of Paul's very first letters written to a, a group of people, the, the subject content throughout Corinthians is, is, is often, uh, unity and and because there was disunity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so so we're we're certainly not the the first ones to 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 fall victim to that sometimes and uh and we won't be the last so what what I would say is uh, one question I I try to ask myself 
is am I allowing the enemy to uh, to use me in, in certain situations? We talk so often how um, God knows us, you know, inside and out. He can number the the hairs on our head and and stuff like that. And He certainly does know us so intimately. But but so does our enemy. Our enemy knows us intimately as well. And a verse comes from um, when it's talking about the the armor of God from Ephesians six. It says, "Put on the full armor of God, so that you can stand against." The, now, different versions use a different word, but it, it basically comes down to the word scheme um, so that you could be prepared for the enemy's schemes. Um, and, and so that, that word is, is, is used very intentionally by Paul because the enemy is not just, it, it's not a crime of passion. It's not an in-the-moment type of, type of movement. He is, he is watching us and he is looking for our weakness. He is waiting for the right moment. And and if you think about it, where is the enemy going to put his the the greatest budget for his <laughs> his tactic? Um, it's going to be within the church mm-hmm. because if it can cause disunity, if it, if I can cause um, them to fight each other, if I can implode this this movement of the gospel, then then I don't have to I have don't I don't have to work too hard outside. Mm. So so when it comes to d- disunity, I think a question is is always healthy to ask at times is, is, am I allowing the enemy to use me in, in certain situations? And, and I know that he's scheming against me and, and it's a good reminder for us to know that, yeah, God knows me, but the enemy does too. And, and he knows, he knows how I am going to take a certain look. He knows how I'm going to take a certain comment. He knows how I'm going to react to, to certain, um, people's uh, attitudes and, and and whatnot so um so just, so just an awareness of that i think is a is a good first step is mm-hmm. uh, is how is the enemy using me how might he use me yeah that reminds me of a question um rob grandy asked in a sermon that he gave was if more people were christians like me would more people be christians mm-hmm. and he kind of used it in the context of loving the disenfranchised but i think it goes for this unity as well you know do i look like jesus my Living like the kind of Christian that makes other disciples, or am I not? You know, that's I think it kind of powerful. goes almost like the other side of that question. Right, right, yeah. right. That's cool. That's powerful. Good question. Yeah. yeah, I think back to um, Jeff's sermon series with the backpacks. We really mm-hmm. latched onto that here at Norwin and the idea of you know what's an essential belief and and what are some more opinionated kind of. Um, beliefs. And I think when it comes to that in the church, the devil can often take those and make the opinion things become or look like, oh, they have to be essential. Mm -hmm. And then we have gotten ourselves down to like, well, we can only connect with two or three other churches because they're the only ones that do it exactly the way we do. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, thinking back to what you said about going to that worship night and things, um, I think when we all get to heaven, um, there are going to be a lot more people mm-hmm. there than some think. Mm-hmm. And I'm so thankful for that. Oh, for yeah. sure. I'm so thankful. And so um, just remembering that like we are not the only Christians mm-hmm. and, and looking for opportunities um, yeah. to look for the similarities right. instead yeah. of the things that make us different. That make us different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. For certain. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's one of the things we all agreed on after doing that worship night was like, this is just such a picture of what eternity is going to look like. Like people together, we don't know each other. We don't, you know, and, you know, Garrett had an observation. They had like the saints on the stained glass windows. And it's like, that's it. We're going to be worshiping with the saints. Like we're going to be worshiping God with Paul. And like, that's awesome. Right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, these people that you didn't know them or maybe you knew them and, you know, they're, they're from that church that does the thing that you don't like. But like you said, they love Jesus and you know, he's the way, the truth, the life. And mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be, you know, we're not the ones to judge, thankfully. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So true. Patsy, is there anything else either on either side of this, the unity side or the disunity side that you want to share? I'm going to read. Um, it's a great, it's a great question, Allison. It's, it's one that I, I, I wrestle with a lot and I think Paul wrestled with a lot. And, uh, and so to, to answer this in in, in just a, a short time frame and and to make it uh, very surfacey, it's it's kind of difficult to do. 
But uh, I, I also like the, the verse, 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. We know that verse. Uh, looking for someone to devour. And uh, so when, when it comes to, we, we have to, all, sober mind is, is where I really like cue in on that in that verse is a uh, sober mind can, can be taken a, a few different ways. If we look at it in the original language, understanding that that means a, a clear mind, a, a clear way of thinking. And so why do I have a clear mind is so that I can focus on what God is, what, what God wants and what God is saying in this and where God is leading me. That's why I need to have a clear mind and also to have a clear mind to say, the enemy is going to try to deceive me. He's going to try to lie to me. He's going to try to do these different things and get inside my head. Um, so I start thinking about all the the things that that are are away from God. So I start just to, to think about um, people's uh, people's comments, or I start to think about um, what they did wrong, or I start to think about uh, how they're not like me, or or whatever causes disunity. I start to get wrapped up in those thoughts. And, and so I start to produce action based on those thoughts. So I need to have a clear mind. I need to have a sober mind. Um, and I think that's where unity can start and say, like, where where does God connect us? Where does God, how, how does God work in our lives? These are the things that, that keep my mind clear. Because I, I know all too well of, of how the enemy can operate in my mind and how he can, I, I, was, I was actually in a meeting just the other day and, and somebody, their, their reaction to me about a, a certain comment was um, very, I'll just say it was very disunifying. <laughs> yeah. um, un, it, was not, it, was not a, it was not a good look. And, and honestly, it was from that point forward that it almost discouraged the rest of, discouraged me in, in the rest of the meeting. Mm. But it was in that moment where I'm like, you know what? This is, this is how the enemy operates. It's truly mm. how the enemy operates. If he can, if he can get us discouraged, then he can get our minds not mm. sober. He can get our yeah. minds focused on me and 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 that and and this and that person, and uh, and it's it's just it it works too well sometimes how mm. he how he uh, puts those seeds of of doubt and um, discouragement in our lives. So yeah, yeah that's, I appreciate your honesty on that one. Yeah, yeah. This is something we talked about in our small group and Garrett's going to be so jealous. I'm talking about so many things he loves and he's not here. <laughs> um, but in Psalm 139, you know, David is worshiping God. He's like, he knew me before I was born. You're omniscient. You're all powerful. You're all knowing. And he, he just goes through all these things and then kind of seemingly randomly, he's like, kill my enemies. Like I hate the people that are unrighteous and, and I you need to destroy them. And the way Garrett explained it was like, after he says that there's, he kind of pictures this pause where David's like, you know, he rants about this. He's like, I, I, I'm so discouraged by this. I'm so angry about this. But God, search me. You know, where am I finding fault in this? Make me clean so that my desires are with you. And like, I think you absolutely lived that out. And that's awesome. To kind of summarize, I think, why don't each of us go around? I'd love to leave the listener with a challenge, you know, for the week or the month to come in regards to making these connections and and keeping the unity that Jesus prayed for. Um, so Patsy, we'll just start with you. If you had to leave a challenge for our listener today um, in regards to unity, what do you want them to think about or to do? See yourself in the bigger picture. See yourself as part of the body. And uh, I'm so glad that, that God has given us each our own um, passions and, and talents and, and whatnot. So um, truly see yourself in the bigger picture and say, if, if everybody had my talent or my gift, would we be better off? <laughs> no, you know. So 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 grateful somebody else is is um, doing this and, and and has this and and just so so seeing ourselves as the uh, as, as the body and uh, mm -hmm. appreciating each other's talents and, and passions. Yeah, That's great. Jonathan, I would challenge you to think about something I learned in. Um, when I was studying psychology attribution theory um, and it sounds fancy. It's not, it's just like, what do you attribute people's behavior to? And you know, you can do it intrinsically or extrinsically. Um, and I think a lot of times we'll 
our, our default is kind of to attribute everybody else's actions internally and attribute our own externally, right? So driving is a perfect example, right? If I cut somebody off trying to get on Route 30, I'm like, oh, well, you know, they were in my blind spot. I didn't really see them. Like, it happens, you know. And then a mile down the road, there's another on-ramp. Someone does the same thing to me. It's like, well, that guy's an idiot. Like, he he didn't look. He's irresponsible, right? And, you know, it, when we do that in our daily lives, we have sins of other people that affect us. And it's like, well, that's just who they are. They're selfish. They're, you know, they're, they don't care, whatever. And when we harm somebody else, it's like, well, they kind of deserved it. You know, I, you know, Satan was leading me, right? I, it wasn't me, right? And maybe, and maybe that's true, right? And, and it definitely is true that Satan leads us ways, but just kind of changing that mind frame and people make bad decisions. You know, you're going to have to do it case by case. There's, there's different situations, but kind of to make your default, not, well, that person's selfish, that person's this, and to make the default, well, how is the enemy affecting that person, right? Or so how is this situation affecting that person? And why am I assuming that that's what it is? So kind of what you've been saying the whole time is what I would challenge people to do. (laughs) Um, But now you know the psychology words for it. Um, Try to externally attribute people's mistakes and internally attribute your own to see how you can grow. That's awesome. That's super insightful. That's great. That's yeah. And look, there's a, there's an actual term for yeah, it cool? like God obviously created our minds and like mm-hmm. knows our minds better than anybody else yeah. and knows how like they operate. And yeah, I, I love that. I love the the psychology of the mind yeah. and, and uh, yeah. Oh, it's and amazing. It all just works together. Yeah. 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 It, and studying psychology, it's, it's just, it, I don't know. I, I can't find the word for it where you see people that dedicate their lives to studying things that you can get from the Bible. Like, you know, the, we'll learn these things like, you know, studies show that the more you focus on other people, the better your life is. It's like, that's, that's crazy, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> doing that for 2000 years, Certainly. like Jesus said that, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's pretty it's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I think sometimes when we have a, a vocabulary word or a term for it, it just makes it a little bit more concrete mm. and a little easier to apply right. than when it's more of just the abstract thought. So, sure. so thanks for educating us today. No problem. Yeah, that's great. No problem. So, Allison, what's your, uh, what's your advice challenge? Yeah. Thank you for asking yeah, Patsy. Yeah. I think I would give our listener a really concrete challenge. So I'm going to make it twofold. First, look for a way to connect within the walls of your own congregation. Maybe you could volunteer Uh, maybe get involved in a small group, or if you just see an activity that's on the calendar, show up and be open to meeting someone new, finding out about someone that's different than you, but then uniting around the cause of helping others learn about Jesus and glorifying God. And then second, um, step out. Look for a way to connect with a Christian that you're not seeing every Sunday in your congregation. And that might look like, oh, you remember you have this friend from college that's a Christian and you could, you know, send them a text or um, you run into someone that you haven't seen in a while and you could invite them for coffee or do things like if we plan an event that's across many congregations, show up um, because you might end up meeting one of your very best friends. That's right. And so um, I just think putting those concrete things in front of us and saying, um, I can't wait for someone to come to me. Sometimes I have to take the hard step and step out um, and say, I want a connection. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing that I always see is like people not to, I know we're, we're wrapping up, but I always see people say, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I need encouraged or I need, uh, I need, I need, I need whatever it is, fill in the blank. And, and often the way to, to, to receive that, the be- the best encouragement is, is often to give encouragement. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's sometimes, yeah, you have to pour out so God can fill you up with what he, he really wants to have in your heart. Um, sometimes we, we stay toxic if we're just, you know, in our, in our own cells and our own needs too often. So yeah, that's yeah. good. See, seeing you pour out. I, I like that. See how you could meet somebody's need or, or reach out to somebody instead of just waiting around for sir, for certain. So um, Jeff talked in our last podcast about when we have guests, 
asking a question and, you know, Jeff asked a, a fairly more serious question of mm -hmm. um, our intern Faith um, in the last episode, but I'm going to go a little bit uh, more lighthearted today with my question. Mm -hmm. So talking about all of these connections and the weather has been super nice lately. So it makes me think of summer. And one of the best ways you can, can connect in the summer at church is through the church picnic. And I know New Salem has oh. one and, you know, Norwin has one. So Patsy, I want to know that when you're at the church picnic, what is your very favorite picnic side dish oh, and why? Um, there are these meatballs. That was so pic. quick. Oh, you didn't think that? about that at all. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. I, I, I test it all. Um, <laughs> And and I and if I tell you the ingredients, you'll be like, "That is disgusting." But there's like grape jelly in these meatballs. Hmm. Oh yeah, in but, them. Well, I'm sorry, like, as a as like a sauce. sauce. Yeah, that's part of the ingredient mm. on the ingredient list for the sauce of these meatballs, and they are delicious. Hmm. That's a good. I know one. it sounds disgusting. I made that for staff fun day. Oh, Do we okay. remember? Is that what that was? Yeah. Then I like those too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, Patsy, we're so glad that you took time out of your schedule to be with us here today. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so good to be here. I, I Every time I come here, I come a different way too, by the way. Yeah, the right, the yeah. GPS always takes me a different way, but it's always so good to be here. Oh, mm. You're always welcome. So thank you for listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We encourage you to go out this week and make a connection with a Christian near you. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 